Good morning. It's hot. It's sunny. Wind is up. There wasn't much of a do last night. I tried bailing late last night. Tried bailing early this morning. Last night was too dry. This morning was too wet. So, like early this morning. And so now I'm heading out. Hopefully, whatever dew was there is gone. And hopefully it's not too dry now. But There is not much alfalfa here. We decided to cut it. Uh, not sure whether it was the right choice, but we did what we did. And we'll see whether it works. If it's too dusty, then I'm losing all my leaves and that's the good stuff, so. Seems to be working. Okay, well, I've had a good run. We're finding it is, I'm finding it's getting a bit on the dry side. And uh, I'm starting to lose leaves. section of wheat um, we're choosing to do Kendall's quarter here first uh, it's on the east side of the half wind is a fairly significant wind from the west so again just precautionary stuff we're just doing the east one first and uh, go from there a little bit of a bugger it is the way it's seeded sprayed and everything we did it east west which makes sense because it's a long mile long that way for all those jobs um, but the wind is like I said straight from the west so when we're heading east the wind is straight to our back and the combines are um, well, needless to say it's blowing dust all over itself here I'm just just coming up here to the west end here now as you can see going this way visibility is wonderful but as I get turned around here, you're going to see it's not so pleasant. Yeah, maybe you guys can't even see it, but... There you go. The invisibility has definitely been worse. I can still see what I'm doing, but... It's working. We're going. Alright, we are here. I got Jackson and Beckton with me. We're gonna load up all the creep feeders. And Daryl just called me and said Peter's not gonna keep up with trucking, so quickly do all these creep feeders and then we're gonna head out and uh, I'll help Peter do some trucking.
give our cows this uh, this ration that we get through Bullseye, and uh, we're hoping the plan is that when we wean them, it'll they'll uh, transition really easily. Not sure whether we're going to be uh, not sure if we're going to be backgrounding them at all, or whether we're going to be as soon as they're weaned ship them. We're not, we haven't decided that yet. So either way, we we'll get some we should get some good growth out of the calves and. Uh, the tree should pay for itself. Couple nice ones in here. Eleanor. There, that's the one I've liked for a long time. That one right there. This is where most of our 4-H ones will get picked from, I'm pretty sure. This is where the majority of our cows are. Really happy with how the cows are looking. You've had enough grass. Uh, I 
show up and things just start breaking. I don't even have to be driving the combines. Yeah, one knife. One knife is gone. All right, quick fix of the knife and he's going again. Let's go. So we were asked the question, why do we choose linear combines? And to answer that question, uh, I'm going to go back. Um, it all started probably even before my time. Uh, we've been running cleaner combines on our farm for, oh, like I said, uh, since the early to mid 70s. Uh, we started, I believe, the first two combines on the farm when my dad and my uncle were farming together. They had two G combines. We went from those G cleaner combines. We went to, I think, Dad bought an M or an M2, and my uncle bought, no, he kept his G for a while, and then we upgraded the M2 to an L2, and he upgraded his G to uh, an L, so we were running, at that time, we were running an L and an L2, and then Dad increased in acres a little bit, so we bought the second L, so we were running, um, three L combines and um, and I think at that time we were running between the two farms we were running right around that 25 or 2600 acre range um, then in the 90s or late 80s early 90s we actually started contemplating um, switching out of Gleaner um, they were bought by a different company and they started running air-cooled engines in them and that was a bit worrisome for us and the many different reasons. It was not something that interested us. Um, but our net, our dealer that we had uh, was very good. So we just kept running our old N7 for years and years. And then in 19, oh man, I can't remember the year exactly. I think it was 93, we traded off, 95, 95, we traded off the N7 and we bought a R72 with a, actually the first R72 did have an air-cooled motor in it and that one was not our favorite combine because of the motor um, but the dealer was very good to us and assured us that they were coming with liquid-cooled motors and so it did not take long and we ended up with liquid-cooled uh, R72 so um, by mid-90s we were running a pair of R72s with liquid cools. Our acres had increased substantially. And uh, then those got traded off on an R75 and an R76. And then in 2012 is when we went to the S series and we bought, Dad always dreamed of buying a brand new combine before he quit farming. And we had a good, really good year in 2012. So we traded the R75 and the R76 off on two demo s 77s and uh, we have not looked back since these combines have been really good uh, capacity has been getting better and better and and uh, so we ran 77s ran two sets of them and then in two years ago we purchased uh, these s 98s and these things are every bit as good and reliable if not better than our 77s and they get the luxuries of this cab and this combine and we absolutely love it. Now that goes the history of all of the Gleaner combines that we own. Um, so we know Gleaners, we know them for a long, long time. So that is, in short, that is a big reason as to why we run Gleaners. But that is not the sole reason because never opposed to change. And uh, as you can see, we've been running quad tracks for years and years and this year we traded to a Delta track. So. We're not opposed to change. Um, however, um, what we like about the gleaners are seat, uh, seat um, cleanliness and that kind of stuff. 
the joke around here always was, and we still get bugged about it, we're driving a bunch of silver seeders. I, it's a nickname they do, they got way back when, and I don't think gleaners will ever get rid of that nickname, but I really don't care what color a combine you run. Uh, combine will save and or throw over only as much as the operator takes the time to set them. So, um, is that a machine thing? Is that an operator thing? I believe that all, all the machines can do the job and I think they can all do it well, but as the operator willing to do what it takes. So that's my beef on that. The simplicity of these combines is what I like. Um, compared to a lot of the newer ones, we only have one gearbox in this combine and that is the main gearbox that runs the rotor. Uh, we got to change oil on that thing um, once a year, it's just preventative. So we do that. Um, belts, I don't even know how many there are, but there's not a whole lot of belts. And even if there are belts and chains, they're very, very easy to to, to uh, change and and this and repair. Most everything that I want to or need to work on. I can do from the ground or from a platform that's on the combine. So very, very simple to work on. Um, and yes, it does happen. They break. Only a fool is going to tell you that their combine never breaks down. So um, uh, they do break down and uh, we do fix them. But these ones are simple to fix in my opinion. We also know them very well. So that also makes it simpler. Your field view is showing a lot of the pretty so, colors right now too. So anyway, that's that's kind of my take on why we run gleaners. The dealers we've had over the years has also been very good. Started off at Golden Plains Agra and uh, Brownkill for a year. Um, now Little Morton and Drummonds locally are gleaner dealers and both of them are doing a superb job of getting these combines out there and keeping their guys serviced. Um, so yeah, all in all, we have no complaints when it comes to a lot of that stuff. Again, preference, you can bug me all you want. Uh, we are not the biggest combine out there. Uh, I will not go to head to head with a uh, with an 8700 Claws combine. It will not happen. Uh, they are bigger. Um, they're a lot more money. Um, but for our farm, what I need, this does the trick. Um, where they're gonna run, just as an example, we've combined with Wingham and they've got 45 foot headers on theirs and they're gonna go as fast, if not a little bit faster, and I'm talking, you know, 0.2 to 0.5 mile an hour with their 45s as we are with our 40s, so. Well, we're loading bins up. We still have lots of small bins. Bins are expensive, and uh, we have enough bin storage. We just have lots of, I say smaller bins, but they're not horrible. That's a 7,000 bushel bin. We got a 5,000 and two 2,000 bushel bins. Those all suck, but it's a good problem when we have to use all of our bins. We're trying to save all of our big bins because we know when we get to hauling oats and corn, we'll be busy and we'll need those bigger bins because oats and corn are a lot higher yielding than other crops. You don't want to be switching bins when you're uh, doing that. The weed is looking pretty good. pretty good it's good and dry well we are still rolling here not sure for how much longer the dust is starting to hang the sun is down and we're still loading trucks <clears throat> <clears throat> I 
had a decent run today. We're hoping we can get roughly 240 acres down on this wheat field, which leaves us 80 acres for tomorrow. And then wheat is done. Then we got like 600 acres of oats. Nah, not quite 600. We can load up the super bees. We got to empty one feeders on route to empty the other one right now. And if uh, we get that one empty, we will get that one empty. The plan is to fill the super bees up, and that should make it sort of an easy. Uh, we should be able to finish the week tomorrow. So. Yeah, that's our harvest moon. What about this moon? Whoa, Peter! Can't see that moon in the dark. Yeah, uh, anyway, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for the day. And anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.